Hello, Quaker Valley. I'm Andrew Serloff, Assistant Superintendent with the Quaker Valley School District. And right now I'm coming to you from my basement office, uh, as I'm sure many of you have had to adapt and, and make some changes. I know my family is having offices and workspaces all over our house. I'm sure you're doing the same. Uh, and so I apologize if during this recording there's a noise or maybe a dog barks or something like that. But the purpose of this video is to talk about how we are going to be calculating grades and how grading is going to work during remote learning at Quaker Valley Middle School for the remainder of this school year. At Quaker Valley School District, our mission is educating and empowering all learners to design their best future. And given the circumstances with remote learning, we are empowering all of our students to continue their education independently at home and to do the very best they can and to design their own home learning experience and design their own home schedule as best they can and to do what works for them as they navigate learning for the remainder of the school year. There are two types of assessments most students are familiar with. We refer to those internally as assessments of learning and assessments for learning. Assessments of learning are usually those assessments that are given at the end of a chapter or at the end of a unit. Those are tests, those might be essays, those may be take-home projects. And the other type of assessment is assessment for learning. Those are the assessments that your teachers use to gauge whether or not their students are making progress or are growing at the rate they should be growing as they master skills and concepts. During remote learning, our focus is going to be assessments for learning. We are concerned with learning. We are concerned if students are growing and if they're making progress with those essential skills that they're going to need next school year when they return to Quaker Valley. Our goals for assessment and grading during remote learning are as follows. We want to focus on learning, not work. Our teachers are not planning to give a bunch of tasks that are not connected for students to do, but better yet to focus on learning what is most important, what needs to be learned from now till the end of the school year. They'll be focusing on growth and progress, mastering critical skills and concepts, not necessarily how many answers are right and how many are wrong on daily assessments. We want to encourage every student to do their best. We know families have all different circumstances right now. There are families that might be dealing with illness. There are families that might be dealing with job loss. There are students that are dealing with a new environment of staying home and having some difficulty not being around friends and family. So we just want you to do your best. We just want you to try and engage as best you can with remote learning. And our final goal, and most importantly, is to do no harm. This is not a time to be overly concerned with getting every answer correct, or making sure that you get a perfect score on a given assessment. We want to ensure that students learn as best they can and that their final grades are not going to be harmed by remote learning. What will stay the same? So as obvious many things are changing during this time, there are things that are going to stay the same. So when we talk about grades for the middle school, the grades that students earn for the first two trimesters of the school year will remain unchanged, and they'll be used in the calculation of the final year-end grades. Assignments completed during the current trimester prior to March 13th, so those Homework assignments, tests, and quizzes, the things that were completed by students during this third trimester before we were closed will remain in the gradebook. But any work that was not submitted or had a score of a zero, for example, for tests that were not made up, those items will be excused for the remainder of the school year. What will change? For related arts classes, the current nine-week marking period will be extended for the remainder of the year, so students are not going to switch 
classes to a new related arts class during the final nine weeks. And students will receive a single grade for the entirety of the time they're going to spend enrolled in that related arts class. Another change is that the lowest grade that a student can earn for a remote learning assignment will be a 60%. There will be no traditional tests during remote learning. So teachers are not going to be posting tests and giving students only an hour to log on and complete a traditional fill in the blank or multiple choice exam. There will be no traditional tests during remote grading. In grades that are earned during remote learning will appear on report cards, but they will only be calculated into the final grade if they advantage our students. This goes back to the idea of doing no harm, and we're going to talk about this in the slides to come. So what will this mean for a student's report card and for an end of year final grade? Well, let's take a look at the scenario in front of us. If a student in the first trimester had a C, and in the second trimester had a B, and for the remote learning period they earn an A, that grade will, that remote learning grade will be used to calculate a final grade because the A earned in remote learning would advantage this student, and this student's final grade would be a B. If the remote learning grade, in this case an A, was removed, the final grade would be a B minus. So because this remote learning grade is going to advantage this student, it will be used in the calculation of the final grade. Now let's take a look at a different scenario. Here, a student earns a B plus in both trimester one and two, but earns a C in their class during the remote learning period. The final grade, if the remote learning grade was calculated in, would be a B. If the remote learning grade, that C, is removed or excluded, the final grade would be a B plus. Therefore, the remote learning grade is not advantaging this particular student. Therefore, it will not be in the calculation of the final grade. The final grade will be a B plus for this student because we will exclude the C as the remote learning grade. What about the related arts classes that are taking place for the remainder of the school year? So we talked about the fact that students will remain in those classes for the remainder of the year. But what's going to happen is that entire time will result in a single letter grade similar to the one they would typically earn. So A, B, C, whatever they earn in their final related arts class will be the end of your grade. Grades for those related arts classes will be comprised of the assignments that already occurred prior to remote learning. So for the nine weeks leading into the closure and during this remote learning period, all of those assignments will be put together to calculate that final grade. Prior to closure, any previous work that was incomplete or not submitted will be excused. These classes will mostly be graded on the student's level of engagement. So again, not focused on 100% accuracy, but for the related arts classes, we want to know that students are engaged, making a best effort, and trying their very best to learn the important skills and concepts in these classes. What if I have questions or concerns about remote learning? If there's anything you need to know about remote learning, if there's more you'd like to know about grades or grading and how things are going to be calculated, I encourage you to reach out to your school counselor. If you're having difficulty in any of your courses and you need help, please reach out to your classroom teacher. And if there's any other concerns you may have, if you're feeling overwhelmed with remote learning or having some concerns about being lonely or not being able to see others or anything that might be bothering you, please reach out to the people at Quaker Valley. Please reach out to those who want to help you. And there's many resources that you can view in our remote learning portal at www.qvsd.org where you can find other assistance. 
In the end, given these most trying circumstances, we want every student to do their best, and we want what is best for every student. We understand that not everybody has the same level of support, and that individual circumstances are different during this challenging time. If you need anything, please reach out to those who can most assist, and we wish you the very best as we continue on with remote learning for the remainder of the school year.